Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode one of the Monthly Chantal, the most popular Chantal show on YouTube. This series will be dedicated to recapping and analyzing the various online antics of my good friend and personal hero, Chantal. Also known as Foodie Beauty, Big Beautiful Me, The Chantal Show, Canadian Amberlynn Reed, The Dingleberry Duchess, Flobby Bobby, Chantal Marie, and as she's currently known, The Daily Chantal. Now, if by chance you have yet to be integrated into the Gravy Nation, then let me be the first to welcome you. There are a few options for you to consider going forward. You can watch this video without context and you'll probably still get a few laughs. Chantal is an entertainer of unprecedented caliber. Her comedy transcends normal bounds. Nice -ish. Nice -ish. I do it by flipping a list! Or you can watch my comprehensive documentary about her and become a Chantologist in your own right in just a little over two hours. If that seems a bit daunting to you, you can read a much more concise summary on her Kiwi Farms thread, which I will link in the description. Even if you have seen the documentary, I would suggest giving it a read sometime, as it covers many aspects of her story that I left out. Be careful, though. One minute, you're reading the original post, the next you're spending eight hours a day for a month LARPing as an amateur documentarian in the hopes of receiving just a glimmer of attention from the gravy queen herself. So, you can pause the video now and go do either of those things, or you can raise a goblet of gravy with the rest of us and enjoy the show. Funding for Episode 1 of the Monthly Chantal is provided in part by ProtonMail, the world's largest secure email service. Unlike regular email providers, it provides end-to-end -end encryption, so only you and your intended recipient will have access to the content of your emails. It also allows you to send password-protected emails to non-protected email addresses, helping to ensure privacy. ProtonMail is incorporated in Switzerland and all of their servers are located there. This means all user data is protected by Swiss privacy laws. It requires zero personal information to sign up and they do not keep any IP logs that can be linked to your private account. ProtonMail is open source and basic accounts are 100% free. Click the link in the description to start using ProtonMail on any of your devices today. Chantal brought in the new year with a real bang. As you all know, she has tons of friends in real life and totally doesn't need YouTube as some sort of ego gratification she can never possibly hope to attain in meat space. To suggest such a thing is absurd and is probably a rumor started by the army of online bullies that target her for no discernible reason. Anyways, Chantal fired up a live stream alone in a hotel room mere hours before midnight, looking rather melancholy. She explains her somber mood. I made plans a month ago with my one of my best friends in the whole world I haven't seen in forever because I always bail on her and I rented a hotel room for two nights a nice hotel room that I'm in right now by myself and went for a nice fancy dinner with my family had some drinks and then I don't know, just started feeling like really, 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 really down and anxious. So, to go to her party. And I feel like a bad friend. So, instead of spending a night full of festivities, surrounded by good friends, food, and drink, she secluded herself in a hotel room to spend her evening with the gravy guard. But why? Why is she so sad? Well, lest we forget, she has just been thrown into menopause at the ripe old age of 35 as a result of her hysterectomy. Yeah, I feel super, like, extra low sometimes since my surgery, and it's just like... <laughs> anyway, you know I'm a mess. But one question does present itself. Where is her lover? Bibi's working till midnight. <laughs> Ah yes, of course BB is working on New Year's. What a good and loving boyfriend, sacrificing his precious time to ensure Chantal doesn't have to get a big girl job and continue to gorge herself on thousands upon thousands of calories on and off camera under the guise of being an entertainer. But it isn't a one-sided relationship. In exchange for his hard work, 
Chantal is fiercely loyal to her man and would never do anything to betray his trust. Wait, what's that? Someone just walked into the room? Could it be room service? No, of course not. They would knock first. Bibi must have got off work early to surprise her. How nice. Now, this is a bit strange. As soon as the door opens, she cuts off her live stream as if she had something to hide. My, <laughs> my last live cut out because somebody came in that I wasn't expecting. Guess who? Introducing. Hi. Oh, that's not Bibi. That's not Bibi at all. In fact, that's Chantal's former boyfriend of nearly a decade whom she almost married. It's Pete's. Now, there are a few issues here. The obvious being the fact that she's spending the night shacked up in a hotel room with her ex-boyfriend while her current boyfriend works a holiday in order to support her. This is made even more suspicious when you know that when Chantal originally cheated on Pete's with Bibi, it was in a hotel. Less obvious is the fact that she just spent 10 minutes on a live stream lying for pity points and ass pats about being alone in a hotel room on New Year's when in reality she was having a totally innocent slumber party with her ex-boyfriend. Her explanation does little to dispel the concerns that many of her viewers had. So the thing is, is I didn't want to tell you guys that I was splitting a room with Pete. We have two beds. There's nothing going on. Small Pete! They called you small, S-M-O-L. Bibi's aware. Why exactly are they staying in a hotel room if they are both visiting their families? I would never be expected to stay in a hotel room when I make a trip out of town to see family, and I would never expect my family to stay in a hotel room when they come to visit me. These aren't distant relatives either. These are their parents. Perhaps I'm being a bit too critical. Perhaps most of you out there would be perfectly fine with your significant others sharing a hotel room with their ex. Perhaps this is all perfectly normal behavior. And perhaps the moon is made of cheese and I'm the Prince of Arabia. The comment section reflects the strange nature of the video, and Chantal again tries to explain it away. The best thing to do in situations like this is to accept the fact that you've done something that people don't like and just put it behind you, which is exactly what Chantal did. Just kidding. She uploads an edited vlog the next day which draws even more attention to the situation. In it, she laments the state of her body, admits that her body positivity mindset hasn't helped, and we can begin to see the inevitable signs of what we all knew was coming. A New Year's resolution to lose weight. Yeah, um... I know I'm complaining about my struggles of being overweight. Uh... Don't worry, I'm not gonna do an unhealthy mukbang. <laughs> Tomorrow, I promise. Um... It is gonna be a new year, so let's make this a good year. I can... All I can do is say that every year and try, you know, but I really, I really do want this to be a good year. My horoscope says it will be. <laughs> of course, she fails at that immediately and has one of her trademark last suppers where she spends the day gorging herself on garbage food before starting the diet. I look like crap. <laughs> We're gonna go um, down to eat and this is gonna be kind of like, I guess like my last supper kind of thing because, um, I'm just gonna show you guys kind of like, eat what I want. I know some of you won't like this, but I just wanna kind of document like, kind of before and after I start my plan. As always, she has no real intention of making any meaningful changes, which is quite worrying. Simply walking around in this video leaves her gasping for breath. My food was gross. The potatoes were cold and the meatloaf was so bland, unseasoned, so dry, so they took it off my bill. She ends the video by showing off her giant order of fried chicken and two jumbo bags of chips and dip. This first video of the year follows the concrete pattern of her channel. Each year is worse than the last for both her physical and mental health, and the perpetual cloud of drama she is always shrouded in grows thicker. The next day she makes a community post and it's almost as if she wants to invite in negative comments. She says she will probably have to use a mobility scooter when she goes grocery shopping at Costco. 
Now, I'm not saying that she shouldn't use a mobility scooter if she really needs one. I don't think anyone is. Her obesity is getting so bad that it's not surprising she can't do everyday normal things. But in the past, she put out a video, unprovoked, where she demeaned and degraded her American doppelganger, Amberlynn Reed, for using a scooter at the grocery store. We need to be walking. We need to even walk for a bit, sit down, whatever. I mean, this woman was in the junk food aisle. To quote the gravy goddess herself, where does an obese person come off judging another obese person on their struggles? To her credit, she makes the Costco trip without using a scooter. Unfortunately, she is once again accompanied by her totally platonic friend Pete's, who spends a good portion of his time behind the camera filming her rear end. Nothing of note happens in this video. In typical fashion, she spends nearly $400 on healthy ketogenic foods that will no doubt go to waste in favor of her daily fast food feasts or some other fad diet. A few days go by before Chantal makes her triumphant return to the world of weight loss challenges. She isn't actually doing a weight loss challenge, to be clear. She's just trying to use a clickbait title that hasn't been popular or effective for anyone since like 2016. No, she isn't doing a cute, trendy little challenge. She's trying and regularly failing to save her own life. She looks sickly in this video, and generally, it's just the same story we've heard every other time she's embarked on a journey to lose weight. All talk, no walk, both literally and figuratively. Her doctor immediately nixes her plans for a ketogenic diet, rendering the majority of that $400 grocery haul useless. He, understandably, doesn't want her to try any fad diets, and this time, she plans to actually follow the doctor's orders. While this new journey is, like all of the others, a joke, some good has come from it. She decided to bring back a good majority of the nearly 5 million views worth of videos she had set to private in late 2019 when she went full militant body positivity. It would have saved me a lot of time if she had done this when I decided to make my documentary, but I did gain a lot of insight reading her entire Kiwi Farms thread in Search of the Archives, so I'm not that torn up about it. What did really piss me off was her little Fiverr intro for what she calls her 365 Days to a New Me Challenge. It's not because I hate generic, basic intros that people think will make their awful, banal content interesting, it's the fact that she calls herself hashtag obesity warrior. First of all, no one gets the title of warrior before they actually do anything to earn it. I can intend to be a millionaire, but without a million dollars to my name, the title doesn't mean jack squat. But that's just me being pedantic. What really makes me one hot potato is that she stole that name from a woman called Cancer Warrior, whom Chantel felt the need to belittle for the great crime of telling her that her obesity isn't a disability and that she has the privilege of being able to get better with sheer willpower alone and instead chooses to squander her good health behind the guise of being a helpless addict. Chantal, you will never accomplish even a fraction of what that woman has, and you should be ashamed of yourself for comparing yourself to her in any way. If I didn't know Chantal, if I had just stumbled upon this video at random, I would have thought it was a joke. She says she can get around her fast food addiction by just making cheeseburgers at home. Um, if I'm craving something that is fast foody, I can try to re you know make it uh, at home. Like I've said before, I can make the potatoes in the air fryer. That's why I bought it. You don't need any oil, or if you want to use very little. Um, and I could make a hamburger at home, you know, it's, and make it a meal. Newsflash, cooking at home doesn't imbue your burgers with magical properties that make them a healthy choice. It's just as bad for you, no matter where you get it. She says she isn't going to be on a ketogenic diet, but some foods will be keto-friendly, which is completely nonsensical. But some things I eat might be keto-friendly, so I just wanted to clarify that. I'm not doing a ketogenic diet. Consuming ketogenic foods outside of a ketogenic diet is probably just as bad for you, if not worse, than eating fast food. The first meal she displays for us is, of course, a complete joke. Two apples sliced up and slathered in salted caramel peanut butter going with the keto but not keto fat bomb right out of the gate. Not a good choice, but not an unexpected one either. The rest of her meals follow suit. Carrots used as a receptacle to shovel dip into her mouth, ground turkey drenched in cheese, a pickle, sweet potato fries cooked in olive oil despite buying an air fryer in order to avoid oils, all accompanied by an enormous tub of guacamole. 
Reviewers were quick to let her know that this latest video was a farce and that all signs pointed to this new diet being another failure before it even got off the ground. The fact is, Chantal will never be successful at taking her health into her own hands until she decouples it from her YouTube channel. She will always fall back into the same bad habits and will blame others criticizing her for her own failure. As expected, her amazing weight loss journey lasted all of two days before she blamed her audience and critics for driving her to failure and made one of her patented ER trips in order to try and guilt people out of holding her accountable for her poor decisions. She follows that up a few hours later by apologizing for overreacting and proceeds to take a three-week hiatus from uploading videos. However, she defeats the purpose of taking a break from uploading videos and continues to indulge in her toxic, toxic addiction to social media. She makes an Instagram post where she sets up all the extra food from her cupboards for a nice little photo shoot and then proclaims her intention to give it to a single mom. You know, the normal thing you do when engaging in charitable acts. Brag about it on social media for good boy points. She also pops into her community tab mid-month to let everyone know she's changing her channel name to The Daily Chantal, which is the fifth or sixth name she's given to this channel. But this time, it's different. This time, she took the time to really think about what she wanted to change it to. Quote, I took a lot of time to think about something that is meaningful to me and something that can be used to help and inspire others. So in order to create this latest channel name, she thought of something very meaningful to her that could inspire others, which is of course, herself. Bravo. Two days later, she pops back in with a classic rage post, letting everyone know that she hasn't failed her diet and has in fact been very successful, all thanks to taking a break from YouTube. Her next posts are just her typical big plans that will never come to fruition, and letting us know that she and BB will be staying in a hotel because their apartment is infested with roaches and needs to be fumigated. I don't really need to comment on that. The situation speaks for itself. All of these posts are hyping her big return, but when the day comes, she makes another community post where she reveals, surprise, surprise, taking a break from YouTube hasn't actually helped her be successful with her diet, and she continues to struggle and fail. Chantal, this is me talking directly to you. Leaving YouTube didn't help because no one else is causing your problems. You are causing your problems. Everyone who criticizes you could disappear tomorrow and you would still find a reason to go comfort eat five pounds of Arby's. She finally does return, filming a health update from her hotel. I was pleased that she confirms my estimates for the amount of money she spends on food as a mukbanger. Do you spend a crap ton of money on food? I would say probably close to, I don't even want to say, but maybe between uh, six hundred to a thousand dollars a month if you're doing a, a you know a mukbang every day. This also confirms my own and many others' hypothesis that she is literally stuck in a cycle of eating food for the camera in order to be able to afford food to eat for the camera, which is quite sad to say the least. The entire video is sad, really. It's just a reiteration of her New Year's plan, just like that plan was a reiteration of the plan before that, and so on, going back to literally the very first videos on her channel. She fires up a live stream a few hours later, which is also sad. It's unusual for me to sense this aura of sadness wafting off of Chantal. Usually, it's just her selfishness and derision for everyone who doesn't worship the ground she walks on, but her hysterectomy has really taken its toll, and her very next video is discussing just that. To the surprise of exactly one person, Chantal herself, she's going through intense grief post-surgery. She had never really wanted kids, so going into the surgery, she wasn't really too concerned about the fact that she would lose her ability to have them. But there's a fairly simple lesson that most people learn before they are Chantal's age, and that is that there's a difference between not wanting to do something and losing the ability to do it altogether. I'm not gonna hammer Chantal for this mistake, it really is just a sad situation, but just when she had built up some real, genuine sympathy in me, she... She just... <sighs> she uploads a video called Fruititarian Diet for Health and Weight Loss. The majority of the video is a lecture about food addiction lifted pretty much verbatim from WebMD and passed off as if it's her own pompous faux wisdom, culminating in her plan to start a new all-fruit and juicing fad diet, which required a huge investment in equipment. So once again, we're back to ignoring the doctor's order in favor of something she found via a Netflix documentary. Her justification? She wants to listen to her body. It's not, this is not supposed to be a preachy video. This is just some things that I've noticed for myself. 
And as a result of really paying attention to how my body feels when I eat certain ways or um, do certain things. I hate to break it to you, but you've been listening to your body for 35 years and this is where it's gotten you. Now luckily, she has zero chance of sticking to this diet because if she did, I could only imagine it would cause major health issues related to her pre-diabetes. And that wraps up episode one of the monthly Chantal. Thank you all for watching, and a special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. You can join either one for early access to videos, your name in the credit sequence, and more. Next time on The Monthly Chantal. Doctors actually know very little about proper nutrition. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. Never change, Chantal. Never change.